Hello everyone, George here, and in this video we are going to create the models for our supply closet room, taking a look at our reference material. We can see that we need to create the broom, we need to create the pail, we need to create the mop, um, we need to create some sort of a bottle, or at least a generic bottle that we can use over and over again. Uh, these bottles are very similar, it looks like we have a square one, a roundish one, and then maybe some sort of intermediate form. And we also need this light right here. With those assets, we have most of everything that we need for this location. So jumping back into here, why don't we go ahead and start creating some stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide out some parts that are going to get in my way, like the top and the bottom, and the ceiling and the sides. So let's go ahead and create, let's do the pail first. So we can start with a ring, I suppose. A uh, ring is one way to do it, and then we can cap the bottom if we want to. We could also do a cylinder, and I'm trying to think which one I, uh, let's do cylinder first. So let's do cylinder, and just move that over here someplace, frame on up on that object, and the number of segments that we want for this. We're gonna to want to break this thing up into individual uh, planks, I suppose, is what we'll call them. And I'm still trying to think about how I want to do this. Uh, it looks like the UVs on the reference material, a reference image here, are stretched across the top. Um, white and brown and or white and black and so forth. You can't really see what's going on. Obviously this thing needs to be faceted into individual parts, I suppose. It looks more like an old style bucket than a new one, you know, one made out of wood, so to speak. So we'll go with that kind of style for this. And given that, I guess we'll just keep with the 20 segments. We'll right click, go to face mode, grab in the individual faces, go to extrude. I'm gonna pull these out ever so slightly, just out a little bit right there. And then from that, let's go down to, um, keep faces together is gonna to be off for this part. And that's gonna create the divisions between each one. And then we'll go down to vertex mode, grab the bottom elements, and then we're gonna scale them in as well. So just in a little bit, something like that. We'll go to the top now and select um, all of you, but that's not easy and quick because of the way selection works. So actually, let's just go to, uh, let's see, where's the select? Let's do, there we go. And unselect any of these guys. And I think we're good to go. Go back there and then shift right click and then extrude. We're gonna bring this in. I suppose, and we want keep faces together on, but because of the way I did things, it looks like we're getting some problems here. See the separation going on right there? Or at least the faces that are being generated between these two elements, that's causing some problems. Um, we're gonna want to, well actually no, never mind. It's not a problem. It's just an issue because we're moving this down and in. Uh, the mop is gonna be in this thing. I'm trying to think about how far down I want this to go. So let's go to the side view of this. Go to X-ray mode, which is, oh, which one is it now? Let's see, X-ray, there we are. Move this down and in somewhere around there, I suppose. And I can go with that, I'll live with it. That's good enough. I almost wanna put like metal rings around this, given the fact that we're going for an older style of bucket. And you know what, I might actually do that. Let's go ahead, and you know, it's my bucket, I'll make it how I want to. Uh, since we don't have a whole lot to go off of with the reference material, so let's do a radius height thickness of 0 0.1 Something like that move this over and in frame up on it come up from the top I suppose and center this object V right there and then looking at it from the top now Let's squash this down a bit somewhere along those lines and out and outward from there Okay and then now we're just going to go to face mode, grab all these faces, and move them inwards. Great. Um, right click vertex mode, grab all of, oh, you know what, I screwed that up. I only want to be moving in, shoot. Face mode, come on, I don't want to screw this up that early. And pull it in. Now we're going to go to face mode on the bottom, and pull all of these elements inwards as well. Like that, there we are. So that's my metal ring on the outside, which will uh, hold everything together, clamping it shut. We could put, um, what is it, nuts or, or not nuts, but rivets, I guess, in here if we want to as well. Um, not sure if I want to do that. I'm even gonna bring this up a little bit, I think, further. There we are. We'll go with that, I suppose. So there's my first set of rings. Um, should we do the rivets? We could do the rivets, why not? Let's make a sphere. Bring this over here, 
frame up on it. We're gonna make this lower poly than what it is though. Maybe 12, maybe 16 going that way and 12 going the other way. Does that give me a good divide? Looks like it does. And even that's pretty high poly for what I'm doing here. So let's do, I don't know. What's 14 give me? 14 is not a good number. Let's go to 12 and let's do 10. Right click face mode, grab all of these faces, delete them out. I'm still good, right? Yes, I am. Let's face or edge mode, sorry. Uh, let's do fill hole. Let's do that co uh, command again. We'll do snap together tool. This one I want to go right there. Enter, there we go. Rotate it beautifully. And then now we can center this thing up, F8. Let's get it close enough. Can we go to, let's see, we are world. Let's go to object mode. Move this somewhere close to center. We only need it close, we don't need it perfect. And actually, control H on that. See how it's also rotated as well? That's interesting, right? Um, let's rotate this and let's take a look here at what we've got going on. I'm trying to see if these transforms are easy to interpret. Frame up and rotate this thing 90 going that way ish. That needs to be a lot flatter, and probably smaller to work. And let's see, surface, let's do mesh display, soft edge, except for the back, which needs to go now. Let's go ahead and right click, grab that, delete it out, F8 twice, and just make sure display soft edge is on. Great. Now we're going to move this in ever so slightly, somewhere like that. I'm going to go to the top display there. It's pointing pretty much the center. We're gonna D and V snap this there, and then uh, Shift D and then rotate this some quantity. Looks like we're falling out. I can't quite tell if we're falling out or not, but we're gonna rotate it. I'm not gonna do it on every one. If I do Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, how far out of alignment do I get by the time I get back around? Pretty far out of alignment. So let's just fix them really quick. That one can go there. We're gonna let it be a little bit off um, that's realistic, that's what life is. It's usually not perfect. So we might as well keep it that way. We might need to sink in the rivets a little bit, uh, grabbing the back side of them and just pushing them in. Uh, I haven't looked at it yet, so, you know. We might need to play with some, thing, some things. Okay, so now we've got that going, I'm gonna go ahead and make my life a little bit easier and grab all of these elements here, here, and here and we're going to combine them together. Not you, just you. There we are. So they're combined now. And since we're seeing this from the top, I am going to bevel that edge, give it another segment, reduce that fraction down. There we are. Let's duplicate this object, move it down here and scale it on in. Something like that. And now we've got our bucket. A little medieval looking, but that's kind of how I interpret this thing. So I'm gonna stick with it for now. I'm gonna combine them all together, or I could group them together. What do we wanna do, group or combine? Um, I could make them separate textures, or I could just do all the texturing in one, probably. So let's just combine them, edit, delete by type, history and scale that on down. Let's do D and move this to the bottom V and scale it on down as well. Move this into place somewhere down there. Display, show all really quick and let's move this to V for the floor and bucket. Let's look at our reference again, scaling out a little bit. Bucket's pretty big. It'll take up one whole tile. The tiling in here is a little bit off, but um, we're just gonna push this somewhere in here, somewhere around there. This room might be too large. The door's gotta swing open, and it's gonna swing open this way, so that bucket might wanna get pushed this way there. Okay. 
Um, we also need the bucket itself to have um, a set of, uh, uh, what is it, a handle or a top that we hold on to. We're going to do that really quick, I think. Let's go to, let's see, since I did this dumb and I did it with this number of segments, I'm going to have to rotate whatever I create. So let's create a, a, um, a cylinder first so I have an idea. So let's frame up on that. Let's rotate this 90 degrees, something like that. 20 is a bit much. Let's go to 18. Let's go to another another good number. 16, let's go to 14. 14, there we go. 14 is good. Let's scale this in. So that bit is going to go into it. And we're going to grab, let's see, this edge, I suppose. And let's just uh, bevel it really quick and I'm doing something dumb because I screwed it up so why don't we just do this so we're gonna push this bevel outwards now to where this why are you not paying attention to me I only want this part to move and I only want it to move out that far okay let's try that again grabbing this one move you to thar why are you double transforming? Edit, delete all by type history. Now let's try this. What are you doing? Well, that's infinitely not correct. Hmm, I didn't know that would happen. All right, so let's go to face mode, grab all of this. Let's go to grow selection, grow, and let's go to grow or shrink selection and shrink and then let's take all of this now and scale it inwards on itself so it's flat great and let's see save now we can nuke the back side of this there's no reason to have that and we can go in here um, what I really want is another set of these so let's grab these push them in go to insert edge loop tool which is F8 and insert edge loop tool and I don't care where it is at the moment I just need something to work with and let's go back to six mode V faces U and grow grow shrink shrink and extrude extrude okay and this next bit in here is going to get shrunk down even more because this is going to be the actual handle part okay so face mode only you please thank you and extrude we're going to push them in and this is getting picky so we'll push them in like this actually let's undo that let's do this and then this wait hold on let's do this G key I don't know why I'm doing this but that's what we're going to extrude outwards. There's no reason to do this whatsoever. Let's not do that. Let's nuke that. Let's take these faces. Let's do the same thing as before. Grow, grow, shrink, shrink, and shrink, shrink again. Now we just have this. Let's right click and do uh, duplicate face. And let me grab this in world coordinates and shrink it down. Okay, F8, grab U, come on, grow, shrink, shrink, right click, let's go to duplicate face, and that's fine. So now I should be able to select just that bit. I'm going to shrink it down ever so slightly and move it out ever so slightly. And that's what I'm going to use to go around this object as a curve. And now all I need to do is uh, scale this thing properly. So let's scale it down. Oops. Um, let's temporarily combine them. Let's do a few things. Let's move this over, D and V snap and X world and shrink down and bring over to the bucket just so I get an idea of scale and what I'm doing. 
so that, that doesn't influence things too much. And let's push this here, and it's going to need to go, I'm guessing, into the metal rivety things that I've decided to create for some reason. And let's put it right there, and scale this on down as well. The rivets are probably going to go. Now that I'm looking at, I'm looking at them more and more and more, and I'm just saying they look like, it, it, this is not, yeah, this is not working for me. Um, this entire ring might actually be pushed up higher the more I look at it. Yeah, I think that whole ring needs to go up. So let's grab all of you and push you. Whoa, not what I wanted at all. Let's not select you. Scale you out a little bit. And let's just move this bit up somewhere there and sink it in. Although before we sink it in, let's frame up, zoom out, right click, edge mode, grab these edges and push them not that far, double transform, oh my god. That's fun. That's really fun. So now I need the actual thing to go around to the other side, so I need to do half of this, and then I can mirror it over to the other side, at least that's what I'm thinking. So, handle, 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 handle. Um, it's gonna come out and it's gonna go up. So let's pull it out first. Let's go to faces and F8, this whole thing. Let's detach these two together from one another. Why I'm doing that is because I'm gonna rotate this into its final location. I'm not sure where that is yet, so I'm keeping them separate. And let's see, attach curves. We wanna do just a standard curve tool, I suppose. Come at this from the side, frame on up. Let's turn off cameras, because they're in the way. There we go, cameras. All right, and something else is in the way, apparently. Maybe the door, esca escape, escape, a, control H, there we go. Uh, here we are, and something else is in the way. Hide that, hide that. Now we've got just this. Grab the bucket and V-snap it somewhere in there. And it's gotta come out a bit. It's probably gonna do a quick turn. It's gonna come up very fast and over within uh, just a single turn, probably. So now we'll go to control verts, and then let's move this to the center of this whole thing. And probably don't want that too pronounced. Nor do I want this mess of crap that's going on down here. So let's move you, let's, let's grab you and move you up and you move you down. And zooming in, we'll move you outwards. And this one, needs to be, let's go to x-ray mode. There we are. Probably right there at that center point. It's gonna come out, it's gonna come over, and it's gonna go in. Hmm, not in love with this, but let's see what it looks like with polygons. So grabbing that, oh, here we go, this is a problem. So see how it comes out in one dimension uh, that we're not working with? So that's that over there. Let's go to modify, center the pivot on this, and scale it in that direction so it's flat. And now let's move this to the center point of this. Let's then grab this and this and do a mesh extrude along the length of this object. Whoops. Let's go to face mode. That's what I want. And then grab this and do edit mesh extrude. There we are. And let's see what we get. So, divisions. There we are. It's a good number of divisions. It's a little thick, um, considering our reference material, because these buckets are not comfortable at all. If you've ever picked up one of these, you know what I'm talking about. So let's grab this thing and shrink it down considerably and undo that. Let's grab this, W, modify, center the pivot on it, and then shrink it down to something like that. F8, face mode, grab this, grab this. 
try that again. Face, grab, face grab, whatever that means. Let's see. F8. Let's grab all of you, then let's grab none of you. And edit mesh, extrude, and increase the number of divisions. That looks a little bit more uncomfortable, which is exactly what we want. Something to bite into the hands of the person using this. So let's just check out from the side view really quick that this is indeed flat. That looks good to me. Let's grab the whole thing now, and we're going to merge it together. So let's do a merge, general, let's see polygons, combine, save. And from that, we're going to do a mirror. So let's go to Mesh, Mirror Mode, and do this in the Z-axis. I'm going to copy it. We're going to Merge Border Verts and hit Apply. That's not the right direction, so let's do Negative and hit Apply. And then it goes over to the other side. Great, so then we've got that. We can then disassociate, or, uh, you know, break apart these two bits here and here. They didn't combine for some reason, so let's merge those together. Right click, go to verts mode, right click, merge verts, merge verts. Uh, did that change the number of total verts? Hold on a second. So 332, hit the G key, 317, looks good. So now that's one solid piece. The main thing to make sure of is that when it rotates, it's rotating about the center point of this bit here. Um, so let's actually Let's look in, hey, my scale is so bad. Um, let's go to x-ray mode, grab this object here. Let's go to wireframe on shaded and um, zoom in a little bit. And then D and V, snap it right there. That should be centered. Now I can rotate this handle into a position that I like, which is going to be down around there. And I'm going to go ahead and edit delete all by type history and get rid of this curve because I don't need it anymore. I want to grab all of this stuff here, here, and here. You, you, and you, and you. Combine them together and rotate this thing um, some amount. Whoops. This should probably be uh, D and V to that center point there. Now if we rotate this thing, it's going to be about someplace that makes sense. We'll just put it right there. Why not? And shading, wireframe on shaded is done. And let's turn off x-ray mode. Great. Okay, so that's our bucket. Wow, that took a lot longer than I was expecting it to. Anyway, in the next one, I hope to be a lot faster. We're going to create the broom and the mop. Uh, mop first and then following up with the broom and then we'll deal with the rest of the items in this area thanks for watching if you liked it give me a like if you dislike it of course dislike but also give me a comment so i can improve the videos in the future and remember if you want more content like this in the future remember to subscribe i'll see you all uh some other time have a great night or day goodbye